Two weapons in one. What more could you want? A heavy hitting sword, a long reaching axe, harness the power of the elements, impact the hunt with stunning potential, explode with rage and let your dominance rain down. Let me tell you why I love the switch axe. The axe in Switch Axe has had quite the ride throughout the series of Monster Hunter. I would say it was a bit of a transitional tool in Gen U. It was fun to play, be it less optimal, in Worldborn, with the Power Axe mode coming into play and being a tripping expert. In Rise, we see it being what it has been before, with a bit more incentive to work it into your rotation. You have the usual staples for Axe mode, that being nice, long reach, magnificent maneuverability with the Fade Slash, and of course the transition attacks. With Rise, we get something pretty cool. In the same sense of activating Power Axe mode in Worldborn, you activate maximum potency that will see your sword mode charge into amp state faster, and I mean much faster. Now, if we take a look here, I have an impact file switch axe, which I do believe charges the slowest of all the file types. Without this mode active, it takes a couple of combo rotations through the X and A combo. While this mode is active though, you'll notice that your sword gauge gets amped up even faster than before. One of the nifty things we get to use while we're in axe mode is definitely the wide slash. I love just how much real estate is covered with this attack. But if you ask me what my favorite attack in the axe's arsenal is, it would probably have to still be the fade slash. The switch axe has never really been known as the king of mobility, but throwing something as simple as the fade slash can be the difference between life and getting slammed by a landing Rathian when you overcommit. Not only that, but for some reason the Fade Slash is the attack that always ends up in a trip for me while I'm in Axe Mode. Now, as far as the switch skills go, Axe Mode is very much a staple for most of them. Invincible Gamut will take you right back to Axe Mode with a bit of a knockback resistance while unleashing a flurry of slashes. The Switch Charger switch skill can be extremely useful, especially since it only requires one wire bug. You'll revert back to Axe Mode and have a large chunk of your sword gauge filled up so you can get back to amping up your main damage dealer. Axe Mode is fantastic to cut tails, reach high heads, or any weak spots that may not be accessible while you're in sword mode. There's still many of the staples that have been in Axe Mode, such as the forward slash, but clearly the biggest addition in Rise is the newly achievable maximum potency mode. Giving incentive to jump into Axe Mode is clearly a good thing, and maximum potency definitely does that. There's been plenty of times that I've gone into Axe Mode to get into maximum potency, and then 30 seconds later, I realize I'm still having a blast, wild swinging, slamming, and reaching high with my axe. I know sword mode is hella tempting because of those explosions, but kick your shoes off and stay in axe mode for a little. You won't regret it. We come to the core of what the almighty switch axe is, a sword. This isn't just your everyday average sword. No, this is a sword that will see you cause explosions and do devastating damage, whether you latch onto the monster or you just fire off the explosion and send your teammates flying. Now, if we're talking about the sword at its base, not in its amp state, you can still honestly do solid damage. And that's what the sword mode is with Switch Axe, a very potent damage dealer with a bit of built-in mind's eye for you too. Now, when I say mind's eye, I just mean specifically that your attacks aren't going to bounce off on those bad hit zones. Like other weapons such as the Hunting Horn, having that built-in is such a convenience. You have a switch gauge meter that will display just how long you can actually stay in sword mode. Because, of course, you can't just sit in this damage heavy mode all day. In saying that, we do have a pretty nifty switch skill called the switch charge that will actually give a nice chunk added to your switch gauge. Now, as you start to swing away, bad hit zones or not, you're going to start filling up the amp gauge. You also have moves like the elemental discharge that always make me think of Nero's little vroom vroom sword. You basically do rev up your sword and you can net yourself a nice chunk of your amp gauge if you hit the monster with each rev and the explosion at the end. Another pretty solid move to ramp up this amp gauge is the soaring wyvern blade switch skill. It quite honestly might be one of the most badass switch skills in the game. It's cool just by itself, but when you can pull off some dope manga-esque moves like dodging a monster's attack and slamming down on them, it takes things to a whole different level of dope. Now, when you get this gauge filled up, that's where the fun really starts. Right off the bat, you'll notice that every single one of your hits while in amp state lets off a tiny explosion and causes some secondary damage based on what file type you have. And this isn't just when you're in sword mode. You'll still get those mini explosions when you're in axe mode as well. 
but we didn't pick a weapon that can transform and morph just for mini explosions. Having your amp gauge full lets you take advantage of another switch skill in your arsenal. The finishing discharge will morph your elemental discharge into a zero-sum discharge finisher while you're in the amp state. Now, there's two sides to this beautiful attack. First off, you latch onto the monster, depending on what body part you connected with, and then you rev your sword up until you get that massive explosion you've been looking for. There's a little bit of a catch to this. You still take chip damage while you're attached to the monster, and you very well can get your ass beat by doing so. To rectify this, you can actually tilt back on the control stick if you know a really damaging attack is coming, or if you just don't want to take any damage. What results is a premature explosion that does a lot less damage, but will keep you from carting out for hanging on too long. You know the saying, hold on loosely, but don't let go. If you cling too tightly, you're gonna lose control. Basically, if you can't eat the damage you're about to take from being clutched onto the monster, tilt back and live to fight another day. So, Handy, what if I don't want to base my whole playstyle around the amp gauge and having it filled? Well, little Bobby, Rise has you covered in the form of a switch skill called the Compressed Finishing Discharge. This attack will take away your ability to do a zero-sum discharge finisher, but it will give you a new finisher that puts you in a knockback-resistant state and lets you fire off an explosive finisher that will take a large portion of your sword gauge and revert you back into axe mode. A little handy tip here is that if you use this finisher after you use your switch charger skill and your sword gauge is flashing green, you actually won't lose any of your sword gauge like you normally do. This actually also applies to your elemental discharge as well as your zero sum discharge, but chances are the effect will be over by the time you get that full ZSD off. The attractive thing about the compressed finisher is that if you're in sword mode, you can pull it off. No waiting for the amp gauge to get charged up or anything. Now, just because you don't need the amp amp gauge to be filled doesn't mean that you still can't benefit from it. You'll still get those little secondary explosions on your attack, and the compressed finisher gives you a very good amount of your amp gauge. The biggest thing you need to remember with the compressed finisher as well is the fact that you'll absolutely send your teammates flying with this move. For me, I definitely prefer the ZSD playstyle, but I love the fact that they've provided an alternative. The sword mode is going to be the biggest draw to the switch axe, especially in Rise, and it's very easy to see why. Now when it comes to the file type on your switch axe, you have to ask yourself what you want from it. Do you want straight up increased raw damage? or do you want more elemental damage? There's quite a few routes that you can actually take, which just adds to the already solid versatility you have with the Switch Axe. In Rise, you have your choice of Power, Element, Dragon, Poison, Paralysis, and Exhaust Files. Power will see you get a direct increase to the amount of raw damage your Swax does. Element Files, of course, increase the amount of element damage your Swax already has implemented. Dragon Files actually add dragon damage to your Swax. For example, the Bashaten Swax on its own actually doesn't have an inherent element, but due to it having a dragon file, it can do dragon damage. Paralysis and Poison Files are similar in the fact that they give your Switch Axe the ability to do damage of their respective file type. Exhaust Files, my favorite of the bunch, are a tad bit different. They'll do exhaust damage to a monster, of course, but if you can target the head while doing this, you can actually help work towards KOing the monster. Now, don't get me wrong, the KO value isn't going to be hammer or horn levels, but it's still an absolutely nice trick to have, especially if you can pull a ZSD off on the monster's noggin. All of these files have their specific benefits, but one of the biggest differences you'll notice is that the power files definitely take much longer than the others to get into its amp state. Now, if we hearken back to the Axe section of this video, we can try to ease the pain of that slow charging time by entering maximum potency. Honestly, regardless of what file you're using, maximum potency is never a bad thing to get going. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of exhaust files, so those can be found on the Diablos and Tigrex switch axes. But I do have to admit that I've been absolutely loving the Elemental switch axe game as well. Element is easy as hell to slot in, and you get some of these high element switch axes with element files, like the Baryoth switch axe, and you can have a lot of fun on monsters like Rajong, busting up his head with some ice damage. Then of course you have switch switch axes like the Almudron one that has an element file and 42 water before you even touch it. I'm really being honest, I even jack up the element on power file switch axes and go ham. It really is a lot of fun to jack up the element and try to exploit a monster's weakness and those hit zones, especially when we talk about weapons like that Almudron switch axe, which can even further exploit that weakness through the element exploit ramp up skill. 
All in all, when it comes down to it, you can really change up a hunt and the way it goes down just by the file you select. So in these videos, I like to share a build that I enjoy using that's off the beaten meta path. For this video, I'm going with an exhaust switch axe build that I love using. It isn't going to net you the most DPS, but it'll definitely get you sub 10s easy and have you exhausting the monster to help create some solid openings while also having the potential for knockouts. Now, with the Grand Cross, I wanted to dip into that area of white sharpness, so we have four levels of handicraft between the Sinister Braces and Damascus Legs. Staying in the realm of sharpness, I really wanted to get Protective Polish maxed out because of how fast those hits of white can disappear. Probably one of the more underrated skills in my opinion, but I'll gladly take those 90 seconds of white sharpness unabided. There's plenty of opportunities to sharpen in Rise Hunts, and you also have your trusty Palamut that will take care of you as well while you sharpen. Moving on from there, we come to a maxed out weakness exploit, mainly because my Talisman game per usual has not been so lucky. I'm rocking in an attack 2, weakness exploit 2 with 0 slots. Yes, this is my best attack boost talisman. We toss in a couple more attack boost decos to get to level 5 and get that percentage increase on our attack. Then we have the fun part of our build, that maxed out stamina thief for faster exhaustion and rapid morph for some fun, hard hitting transition attacks and increased mobility through those morph attacks. We of course have our flinch free slotted in as well, and a speed sharpening deco thrown in just to fill in space and make our protective polish kick in a little faster. As I said before, this isn't the build that's going to get you the fastest speed run time, but it is for sure viable, fun, and gives you some utility through exhaust and KO thanks to the exhaust file. The switch axe in Rise is what it has been for so long, an underrated awesome weapon with such smooth synergy between axe and sword mode. This iteration of the switch axe takes that a step further with maximum potency. You add in skills like rapid morph and you see that beautiful dance between axe and sword mode ascend even higher. The transition attacks are as smooth smooth as ever, as potent as ever, and really help to make clear what the identity of this weapon truly is. Axe mode still has the wide and high reaching slashes, along with the guilty pleasure of wild swing and a newly added maximum potency to aid you in amping up your sword. It's still the less optimal of the two modes, but it's nonetheless fun to hang around in for a bit. Cutting those high hanging tails with an upward or overhead slash still gives you a sweet feeling of competency. Sword mode as always is still king and feels better than ever with the option of the usual ZSD finisher or having a more compressed and accessible finisher if you so prefer. Files still bring in quite the amount of versatility for a weapon that already sees you bouncing back and forth between two entirely different weapons in the first place. Status files give you extra utility, especially with the potency of morph attacks, and exhaust files bring in the ability to stun, while power files just literally bring the pain. As always, I'm a sucker for elemental play, so having so many elemental file switch axes definitely brings me joy. The switch skills you have at your disposal are fun, high flying, and give you just the right amount of change while sticking to the core of what switch axe is, which is also the theme throughout the weapons in Rise. For me, I tend to stick to the forward overhead slash, mainly because I love the follow up double slash going into sword mode. The OG ZSD wins out for me because I just love attaching onto the monster and firing off that powerful explosion, especially when I'm using an exhaust file and connect with the monster's head. Now, Soaring Wyvern Blade just wins outright because it looks absolutely dope and does solid damage while giving you an opportunity to pull off some badass evasion to punish combos all in one. Now, if you're the type that likes to have a move for when you're in a tight spot, I can definitely see you taking Invincible Gambit. Being able to rip that off in a pinch is definitely nice, but have you ever pulled off a Soaring Wyvern Advance after you ripped off a ZSD? Yeah, it's never not cool. There's been a lot of discussion about Rise and the amount of content and burnout out, but you know how you can extend the replayability by trying a new weapon and working towards mastering it. Or honestly even picking it up casually for a bit is still going to extend your playtime and you're going to have an absolute blast learning the switch axe, building the various file types, and having built in Mide's Eye on your sword. I promise you, you won't regret doing so and you'll see why I love the switch axe. But that's going to be it for this one. The Switch Axe was definitely one of my favorite weapons in Gen U, shout out Aerial Switch Axe, and continued to be a blast in Worldborn. This only deepens in Rise and I couldn't be happier with it. Discord, Patreon, and merch links are in the description below, and feel free to become a member of the channel if you're looking for a way to support. If you liked the video, let me know with that thumbs up. Comment down below what you think of the Swag Axe and why you think others should try it. Stick around for more of the Why I Love series and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can catch them first as well as streams, reviews, builds, and more. 
On that note, have a good night, happy hunting, and I will see you guys in the next video.